Hey everyone, welcome to Dalwell Podcast episode 83. It's been a while, we're in the new year. Uh, we got a lot to catch up on, and uh, we hope you enjoy this episode. How How's everything been? I know we, it's been a while. Um, been crazy. Been real crazy. How was the holidays? What you've been watching, play, maybe playing, picked up, what you get for Christmas? I didn't get anything for Christmas. Been playing. I started over doing Ratchet and Clank. Because mm-hmm. I'm getting ready to, I'm thinking about doing some uh, YouTube videos of a Ratchet and Clank playing through. So I'm working on that. And other than being promoted to associate pastor, nothing. I thought you said sociopath. I was like, yes. what are they, what are you, what are they teaching you? Sociopath. Yes. Other than being promoted to a sociopath, I didn't that's really. That's right. Uh, that's right. They come I in, took a stocking I get, 101 I get, class. I get random choice of who I get to throw knives at. Awesome. I went and played catch with the neighborhood kids, taught them how to catch a hatchet. That's right. Not you... with the back of your head, Billy. Really. Almost. Just be upon you. And all of a sudden, daggers are flying through the air. All right. Um... I got a coal. <laughs> That's what I got for Christmas. Bloody. Because we had that seat, what was it, cedar? Yeah. Pollen or whatever was blowing yeah. through this state. Man, I got sick. Seemed like every time I got better, I was getting is sick again. What, is that what triggered all that? Because, yeah, it felt like leading into the Christmas holiday, everyone was sniffling, coughing. Yeah, that's what and it was. Every, everyone came down with a cold basically all within the same week of each other. And it lingered for like two <laughs> weeks of just like general congestion into coughing yeah so so for christmas at minimum yeah we all got a little bit of a of the crud right mm-hmm. i guess is the technical term for it i think um, tree spooge tree, tree or whatever yeah. yeah i didn't have the crud i had the tooth pain that lasted a month and a half <laughs> awesome uh, that prevented me from wanting to do much of anything it's like you, you bite down on something and it goes, hello there. How Hi. Are your guest for the next uh, 30 days. It's like Obi-Wan Kenobi telling General Grievous, hello there. Hello there. Anyway. um, I got No, see- but I've been watching a lot of binging, man. I, I caught up on so many shows, but I didn't read that book that David's been fussing at me about, and I should I've have. I've been fussing. I'm not the one who, I think you're the one who said we should read it. I'm pretty sure. Hey, if I re- it's been a while. Which, which, what I, is I the did. book? What if, which you is the book? The one. Huh? I did. The Batman. Oh, was it you? Batman. Oh, no. No, I already read the Batman. You're talking about the sequel. No, no. We we were supposed to, like, we have been attempting to we're do We're supposed to do. I read it after he did. Okay, I was like two days after Batman he finished 89, it. Which, hey, look. Well, then who was waiting? Well, Anyways, at the I'm time, sorry. I couldn't. I we all couldn't read it. I mean, I'm done with it, but we can talk about that. Well, next well, episode. Well, yeah, next I, episode. I gotta, re- I gotta refresh myself. It's been a hot. Yeah. But <laughs> I, wa- I mean, Netflix had some great uh, series this time around. Uh, uh, was it Blue Blue Samurai? Oh, the uh, blue eyed samurai. Blue eyed samurai, man, that was fantastic. I loved it. I, there was uh, the the one based on the old game, um, Oni Musha. Musha. Oni Musha, I love that. I mean, Percy Jackson was fantastic. Um, what is the Godzilla uh, Monarch was been has been great. I haven't seen uh, that. Yet. I want to see that real bad. I binge watched. I love. Um, it, it's crazy, but it just reminds me of fishing with my dad. But uh, something tuna, the Outer Banks, Wicked Tuna. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and so, I I watched the first two seasons, and it kind of fell out of it. Watched a little bit of the fourth season, and the tail end of the. Fifth. So I was like, you know what? I'm going all the way back, and I watched it. All the way through. I just binged it in a couple of days. And then I was like, you know what? Let's just go through and get caught up on a lot of shows that I didn't get to watch. So 
I was, there were some things that, you know, I was really surprised and happy about. Well, you watched One Piece. You know, I haven't watched that yet either. One Piece was fantastic. Um, I did not like the first part of what's the, what's the one about the guy who, the kid who dies and he becomes a ghost. You Hawker Show. You Hawker Show. Yeah, man, I was like, okay, this, I don't remember any of this stuff. This is nothing like the, the show. I'm not watching it. So, so David can uh, talk about that since yeah. that's David's show. Yeah, so if we're going to talk about stuff that we're watching, uh, I haven't finished all of Blue Eye Samurai. I need to finish it. Uh, the first episode kind of annoyed me because the the peaches set up and payoff I thought was stupid, but everything else about it, like you said, was great. Um, I also watched They Clone uh, They Clone Tyrone, which is fantastic. I have not I, watched that yet. I love that movie, but uh, yeah, when it came to Hakusho, Show, man, I. Like originally, you know, we were we talked about it whenever they announced it, and I had no desire to watch the show whatsoever because it's Netflix and it's anime adaptations and they're always garbage. And then One Piece happened, and I was like, you know, the uh, the Hawkeye meme of you know, don't give me hope, right? Yeah. So the first two episodes, I thought, you know what, I really like this guy playing Yusuke. He's actually a really good Yusuke. I don't, I've never liked Kuwabara and I hate this guy. So I guess he's doing a good Kuwabara. And I thought the first two episodes did a semi decent job of condensing the uh, spirit detective arc down. But then, man, once you get to that third episode where they take all of Genkai's training and fit it into like the first half of the episode, I was like, what is this? What, wait, no, 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 no. No, you're telling me there's no Genkai tournament? Because I hadn't looked into anything about the show. I didn't know how long it was going to go. In my mind, I just kind of thought, okay, it's a Netflix series. It'll probably be about six episodes. I figured you get Spirit Detective Arc out of the way in the first two episodes. Um, you spend two episodes of them training with Genkai. And then the last two episodes would be the hunt for Yukina, leading into the first confrontation against the Tagura brothers. And instead, what we got was... The first two episodes condensing the spirit detective arc, Genkai's tournament or Genkai's tournament not happening, and them just training with her for one episode, and then the rest of the series is them going to find Hiei's sister Yukina, and then the last two episodes are essentially the dark tournament, because it's Team Urameshi versus Team Taguro, literally against the people that they fight in the dark tournament, and then it ends with, you know, the way that the dark tournament ends, kind of. And I just thought, like, I got to that point and was like, guys, the Dark Tournament is one of the most beloved, like, story arcs of anime from that time period ever. And you just tried to condense it into two episodes where it doesn't even fit. And, and what's so sad is that the fights in it are real, like, the fight scenes in it, I really enjoyed. And like I said, I, I really love the guy who played Yurameshi. I think he did, he did a really, really good job as Yurameshi. It's just when you condense like six storylines into six mm -hmm. episodes like that, when there's so much character and build up and payoff for so many little things throughout it, like Netflix screwed up bad. But they, they that's the thing. Um, Airbender, remember um, the first movie? It yeah. tried to put too much into one movie instead of having the first book be three movie, the next book three movies, and just carry it through. Um, I mean, I love Percy Jackson. I read the books to my, my grandkids when they were younger. Um, I love uh, HBO, I mean, not HBO, uh, Prime's His Dark Material, which were all of the uh, – the the golden compass the what you call it knife i can't remember the titles of them those were really true i mean you can tell when somebody really loves the the myth the, the story they're telling and they put so much of it in there that even if they leave a little bit out or they change something for story you know movement or flow it's there you still feel it but man when it is not it stands out like a sore thumb and you just yeah. get taken out of it. Cause, cause um, like leading into the series, I pretty much figured they weren't going to do the four sank beasts. I was like, okay, the sank beasts aren't going to happen, but they had showed in the trailers that the Makai insects were in there. So I'm like, okay, maybe they'll do something interesting with the Makai insects. And that first episode is all about the Makai insects or at least one of them. And I thought, okay, 
maybe this will have some payoff later. And then it never did. It just kind of, they show up, I think. It's just there for you to get a visual and go, oh, I know what that's from. Yeah, it's, it's, but it's not even a good enough member berry to really be satisfying. It's, it's like, you know, you walk up and you lick the grape and it's just enough to make you hungry. But then the whole, like the whole bag gets stolen from you and then you don't get anything to feed on after that. It's, it's. Yeah, I, I was I was very I, I started off with hope. This the show started to sucker me into thinking, man, are they actually going to do a semi decent job of like condensing this? And then it, I got to that that again, first two episodes there was stuff in it that I I didn't necessarily care for, but I was willing to give it a pass because, again, just the strength of that guy playing Yurameshi, I really really liked him as Yurameshi. And I just thought, okay, I'm willing to sit through this. And then we got to that third episode. And what what was even worse is that if I remember right, Genkai is played by, and unless you know old samurai movies, this doesn't mean anything to anybody. But the lady who played Genkai was Lady Snowblood, right? So you have like a cool little reference to old samurai flicks that's oh, or samurai flicks, right? Uh, in in the series, and she shows up and is almost immediately gone. She barely has any screen time. And it just seems so stupid. I, I don't I don't know why you would waste all of that, but whatever. It it's come, you know, it's gone. I, I it kind of felt I that way feared. with the Bebop, you know, the what they did with Cowboy Bebop. And I was always on the border with it, whether yeah. I, I was a hate love relationship with it. I went back and rewatched it. And I was like, you know what? Now that I can distance myself from it and my expectations weren't so high, I didn't mind it as much as I did originally. So sometimes we have to go back and rewatch something later. And it really is where our mindset is when we're watching it the first time. But right. you know what couldn't be saved? That friggin' Rebel Moon piece of crap that <laughs> Snyder delivered on a plate. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot. I, I... I legitimately forgot I watched that because you know what? After I got through it, the first thing I thought of was it reminded me of when I had watched uh, Raya the Last Dragon with my daughter. And I thought that would have been better as a TV show so you could spend more time, time. in each given area yeah. so that I actually cared or at least understood what was going on. Instead, it's mm-hmm. like, okay, guys, uh, we're going to set up this thing really quick and then we got to go to this. I mean, it was literally the very beginning, right? They go to that saloon because we need to make contact with the the rebels, and then they see the the dude being carted away, and then all of a sudden he's like, "Oh, well, I know where to go anyway. We just need to." Yeah, like, so, I, you know, so why did you need to talk to that guy? Why did, did you need but, to talk to that guy if you already knew where it was at? What is going on? This is so. He stupid. was there just to set up the betrayal at the end. I knew <laughs> he was the bad guy from the minute he was there. You know what? I'm not going to give you any kind of plot. I'm not going to have them like. We're going to see any backstory and we're not going to see him become good friends with him. He's going, hey, I got you a ride. Come on down. You know, I was like, no. And I had to go and watch Chris Sawa's Seven Samurai. I had to go back and watch the original Magnificent Seven just to give me a palate cleanse. Because that's all it was. You know, and then I sat down, I did two reviews on Facebook and I named <laughs> every scene that was ripped off from something else. And I wouldn't have said anything, but some guy was like, this is the most original story I've ever seen in my life. He nails all this. He's it's what Star Wars should have always been. <laughs> and I'm like, my brain was like, <laughs> no. and it broke and no. I became a psychopath. <laughs> but I did my work killing with my keyboard. I was like, let me school you. <laughs> dumb padawan okay yeah. so he, here's the thing though we did watch the creator and that loved movie it. Loved was it. fantastic from start and to i'm finish, still the technology I'm sure that that's gonna have a sequel i'm that ending is set up when she smiles and they don't tell you what she's smiling at i'm like okay this isn't over with. And I hope there is a sequel because that movie deserves one. Okay, so are we talking about Rebel Moon? I missed it. We no, talking? we're done with Good that later. piece of crud. No, I'm not. So if you, I didn't if even you watch it something... because these guys were talking bad about it so much. I didn't even care anyway, but uh, yeah. I was like... <laughs> you know what? Know, but... You know what? You want to watch something interesting? Watch your cat throw up on the floor and a dog come eat it. It's about the same. 
Nice. Okay, David, let's circle back to Haka Show for Hakusho. just a moment. Okay. Okay. Let's take that and let's take One Piece. Both from Netflix, right? Right. Mm-hmm. right. How do they compare? So I haven't watched One Piece because I've never cared about One Piece. I've always hated the art style of the manga and the anime. So I've just never watched it. But from my understanding, right, from from what other people say, um, the creator was very heavily uh, invested and involved in the One Piece uh, Netflix adaptation. So you constantly had him over their shoulder making sure that, you know, they were... I guess hitting the right beats because I mean even that show from my again from what I understand condenses a lot of the manga. It, it does, but it sets up some of those stories to happen later because they're expanding this. This is going to be you know here's a series that has not ended. Talk about the song that never ends. Yeah. But case closed. Facebook is never going to. I mean Facebook, Netflix, Netflix. is never going to go the whole route. We're never going to see yeah. it. So okay. they're trying to give you the key points of this life, but they're going to give you maybe not in the same order, but you're going to understand what's going on. You're going yeah, to get that, a taste of everything. Yeah, and I mean, and that's what you have to do with live action, right? Because uh, actors are going to age and all that stuff. So, you know, when it comes to all these adaptations, one of the main things that people complain about is the the condensing of, you know, their favorite part of some story arc or some weird random character that showed up for like half a scene but it was so important to them for some reason like i don't ever go into these shows under the expectation that i'm going to get a one-for-one remake of it but understanding how to condense a story is so paramount when you're being forced to condense a story you need to be able to go through and identify what are the main emotional beats and story hooks that i need to seed throughout this Okay, this happened in this order, but I can't do that because I can't show, you know, the B part of this. So how can I kind of rearrange it a little bit to make it make sense and still like hit it the way that, you know, it more or less needs to be done. And from what I understand, One Piece nailed that all the way through. Mm -hmm. All the way through. And like I said, Hakusho started with promise because, again, for, for me, a lot of people don't remember the, uh, um, the spirit detective arc because it's really weird. It's very weird and it's very slow. Nine times out of ten, people who try and sit down and watch Haka Show really struggle with that first arc. And then once you get beyond that and you get into the Saint Beasts and Team Urameshis together, then is when everyone starts clicking and being like, "Oh yeah, this is great. This is good." And then you get into the Dark Tournament, and it's it, it's all out from there, right? But Haka Show just it it condensed way too much into way too little room and when when you again when you take six story arcs and you put it into six episodes there's just no way that you can do that justice there's no way to do it and see that's the thing is like with monarch it's 10 episodes there are some series that give you the prop 10 to 12 i think if you're going to do a maxi series that's what you need and they need to be 45 minutes to an hour that gives you plenty of room to explore everything but when you're trying to do it in six episodes you're you're just handicapping yourself from the very start um i like the new what if season but you could tell it was an advertising for what's coming up and uh, what happened in echo and all these other things um i enjoyed echo i binged it yesterday didn't expect that ending at all. It, uh, I mean, I was surprised. No, I'm just. Don't I'm not going to talk about it. Yeah. I was just surprised by the ending and the the opening sequence with the guest appearance by Daredevil was right. Friggin' phenomenal. Man, yeah, that's that's not a spoiler because everybody knew about that. Yeah, yeah. that was what was being shown on online, but yeah. it's a much longer fight. <laughs> So I'm gonna have to yeah. get that part. So. Gonna think slow down. Probably Saturday is when I'm gonna binge it. So maybe I'll even go back and try and get in. Like uh, it's a quick watch. They're not full yeah. long episodes, and it's only six. Is so it, um, is it six? I I heard five. Yeah, it's five. I'm sorry. I was expecting six. It, it was five. No, no, that, that's fine. I mean, it it for me, it seems like it's gonna be really good because from what everybody's saying. 
but at the same time, it's going to be like the original Thor movie was. It's going to be a stepping stone for more stuff to come. Here's what I, I, I hope and pray for Disney, that Disney realizes you can make movies for both young girls and you can make movies for young boys, and they don't have to be ex exclusive of each other. Marvel Universe gives you female, strong female characters and strong male characters. You can do both. Then use your big tentpole movies to have them together, but focus on the characters. You know, I would love to see a, a movie series, a live action movie series of Captain Carter. Because yeah. I, I love the Captain Carter stuff. It's so original. And then the idea, there are elements that a lot of people missed or forgot when the movies came out. Remember when they're going to use the, the pin particles play a lot into the time travel. And there's a sequence when Doctor Strange gets thrown through the multiverse and he goes through the PIM universe. He actually passes through the PIM particle that Hank Pym and him and his wife Janet were stuck in. Right. Back so in the Pym particles play a big role, which is why quantum mania was so important and most people missed it. But when Cap was sent back in time to grab the Pym particles, he only needed two. Did okay, you see so what he grabbed? Rewatch it. He grabs okay, so four. This is, are you talking what if? No, I'm talking the movies. Okay, because but you'll get hints from the what if, then you go watch the other stuff and you go, Man, I missed that, or I wasn't paying attention. So Cap never intended to come back. He stole oh. enough PIM particles to do his thing. When he was there visiting Peggy as she was old, and we found out she'd married, and she wasn't surprised to see him. It's because he was already there. He's the guy hiding in the background. It, yeah, he yeah. um so those writers did a phenomenal job in building a universe with detail and that you had to watch the thing with more than just a, what is it? A superficial viewing. Look at the things that are going on because it all ties together. And that is something we did not get with anything live action DC did. So, there was a lot more thought that went into what Marvel was trying to do. And if they can pull themselves together and Disney can take their head out of their, you know, what's and realize that this doesn't have to be one way or the other. You can go back to making movies for young men and for young girls mm -hmm. and build a cohesive universe and your money's going to start flowing back in. But as long as you keep alienating your audience, you're going to be struggling. Well, uh, here's the thing with that is we're seeing it right now with Disney, with them at first going, oh, we're making the Ray movie and then them pushing that's the back burner so they can make a Mandalorian because of the uh, blowback. On top of that, you have the whole uh, thing with the yeah, but Mandalorian is not going to we're not getting a fourth season. No, so we're going to do a we're movie. Not. We're getting a, We're getting a movie. No, they are. They announced yesterday that there's going to be a, a season four and the movie. We'll see. I I, that I just was can't. The latest announcement I read yesterday. I don't know, uh, but to see the thing is, I, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I think that they're trying to get something out. They know that you know, and and I, I don't care about Star Wars anymore. I told my son, I just don't. Yeah. I don't follow it. I don't care. Um, but Star Wars is what I remember. Star Wars is the legends. The Star Wars is the movies. Star Wars is the Ewoks, the droids, and all the things I grew up in. And the rest of this stuff is just somebody's fan fiction. Um, but they already know that, that this new series they've got coming out about the origins of the force and the, and the, and the, the Sith the is not going to work. And, the acolyte, no. it's not going to work. So they're trying to balance it out and get something out there to save it, to keep the audience. Cause the audience at this point is ready to leave. And I mean, I'm, I'm done. I mean, the thing is, is that as I've told you before, I got to see my end for Luke Han and Leia. And that was, the that book was from the, the book. Crucible. Yeah. yeah. You know, they got to pass the torch off to um, 
Dana, all the young Jedi's and yeah. Ben and the young Jedi's. And I got to see the journey of what Luke was supposed to be. He, what he was before Disney decided to can to change all that. Um, you know, and I've, I've made that comment to you guys too, about the fact that the only thing that can, I can explain how the sequel trilogy works is if it's a hyperspace, or I mean, a, a, a carbon freeze nightmare for Han Solo, because if you think about it, Han at that point didn't understand the force, didn't understand everything. He, that would be how he felt Luke would have been just like Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, being a hermit. How Leia was, oh, she was big and being a rebel, not this great senator. Because at that moment in time, his understanding of what was up to that point, he was frozen. Was out to that point. And it makes total sense that why the sequel trilogy is the way it is, because it is a fever dream in Carbonite. Of well, here's the thing. There is a ton of new stuff coming out, new and original by some really good creators. Not hacks, not people who want to put their spin. They're telling great stories, and there are series coming out. And I will devote my time to that. Right. You know, I I did go see. Um, I took the family to go see uh, the boy in the harem, Willy Wonka. Oh, Willy the Wonka. Wonka. Man, I oh. loved it. I I just fell in love with it. I felt like I was watching a young Gene Wilder. It felt like something that was an extension. Of Gene Wilder's, not the you know, not the other one, um, not the Tim Burton's, and I would follow that if they do another movie, showing mm. him growing and getting to the point where he was, where we watched him, the you know, you know Gene Wilder for the first time. Um, I went with Alice, and we went and saw the Boy and the Heron. Friggin' yeah, Ghibli cool. never disappoints. Even though he touched on some of the same elements he's done, Spirited Away, House Moving Castle, and that alternate world thing, um, it was I. I had the warm fuzzies. I loved it. I could sit and watched it again. Um, and but remember, that's it. Really saddens with... me that this is really probably his swan his song. Last, yeah, his swan yeah. Song. But the thing is, is that his, his most of his stories have been about the two different worlds you look at like um let me see uh princess mononoke you had technically the the real world and you had the magical world where mononoke was from. but in those worlds you... they lived side by side in the same world few of his stuff is where it was where you passed a portal to go to this other one right yes um the one thing I could really feel in this was him dealing with his own mortality. Mortality, right. Because that's what this story was about. Um, you know, the fact that they brought back some uh, actors, you know, Batista playing this one character, and I didn't realize it. I was like, man, why is that guy's voice so familiar? And then reading the credits and finding it was Dave Batista, I was like, wow, man, he had... He has some real acting chops mm -hmm. other than the roles he puts forth for people. Um, I think he should play a few more different roles. So he's not stereotyped. Correct. You know? Right. And that's, that's one I'm of the sure. things that happens with the rock. Unfortunately, you know, he needs to branch out even more than what he's, what he's done. Well, but how much, how much of that is them typecasting the rock and how much of that is the rock? Like, yes, saying, he is well, a brand. Right. Because, well, it's that whole like, Michael Madsen thing. He wanted, he wanted Black Adam to be the hero when it's like, right. but that's not Black Adam. So oh, here's the thing. You doing? When you're an actor and you reach a certain point in your career, you no longer play roles. The roles play, you, you were just yeah. you in the, yeah, role. In the role, John yeah. Wayne, Bruce Willis, you know. Michael one Madsen. thing about Robert, De Michael Madsen, but Robert De Niro and, and, and Al Pacino, they were character actors at heart so they went into their roles they're not when you watch them you can't go oh that's robert de niro you go oh, i believe this character is a father i believe this guy is a gangster i believe this this and that robert duvall yes when he was younger was a character actor now 
it's Robert Duvall. You know, he has an, like an old man doing these something people yeah. have these image and then they stick with it because that is their brand. There is one role, one movie that Robert Duvall did about uh, 10, 12 years ago called The Apostle. Where he was uh, I, run from the cops and ended up in yeah. a church. Great movie. Completely it. left yep. field. Beautiful movie. I mean, it went completely against whatever he has going on with this thing, and it should have gotten way more recognition than it did. That, that I thought movie, it did pretty well when it first came out. Yeah, but thing is, it could have done more, but because mm-hmm. people wanted to typecast the movie type or the, the premise, it, it, it fell by the wayside. Yeah, because you know, you know, oh, there was never a movie where there was Burt Reynolds starring as this character. It was always a Burt Reynolds movie. Mm-hmm. You know, I I can honestly say that Anthony Hopkins has now gotten to that role. You know, it, you know, what's sad about Anthony Hopkins, he now always plays the narrator. He is always the voice that's going to explain what's going on to the people. Just like, um, what's his name? Bormir, the actor who always dies. Oh, oh, uh, Oh my gosh, um, Sean Bean. Sean yeah. Bean. I was watching. He he just did a. They did a, a live action version of the Knights of the Zodiac movie, which is based on the anime. It's right. actually pretty good. I was really surprised. Um, except I was watching him later after I watched it. He was interviewed, and he was like, "I always get these scripts and I read through them, and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. This is scene all right, twenty eighth, thirtieth, okay, forty. Oh, here's where I die." Yeah, he goes, I do not get scripts where I don't die. And he goes, if I get one, I feel like this is incomplete. I think you messed up here because isn't this where I should die? No, we thought you die all the time. We're going to let you live. No, (laughs) I want to die. And I think it's because he doesn't like to do sequels. (laughs) And he's figured out, I don't want to do a sequel, so kill me off in every movie I'm in. Yeah. Well, another movie we we watched during... um, Thanksgiving was uh, Voyage of the Demeter finally which I know David talked about previously mm-hmm. but there was some things we were discussing about that film we enjoyed it but we knew exactly the scene David was all like okay there's certain things yep. about lore where this should not this should not work like it did and it, when he's holding up the freaking cross against Dracula I'm sorry I, that should have worked both yeah. both times like it's okay, your faith I, that drives it it's I, not well, the well, cross. No. It's the but faith then, of the person wielding right. the weapon. And but we're then it should have worked for the first guy. Because the yeah. first guy was the super devout, you know. Super uh, devout. Person. I know. I know. But then he gets murked by uh, Dracula out on the boat. And then you have the captain at the end who, you know, if I remember right in the book, it's actually the captain is the only one left. He's dead, but he's like tied himself to the wheel, if I remember yes. right, yes. of, of the yes. ship. Well, there's a, in it, in the original story, it's only his arm. Tied oh, because yeah, Dracula oh, ripped yeah, him okay, off. Yes. And in okay. this, I believe he was tied himself to the mass. Dracula killed him. And at one point you see him rip him off of the, the wheel. Um okay, I'm sorry. Vampires do not cross over bodies of water. Correct. No. That water running water will kill them. Any running yeah, water Dracula will kill them. flew his butt out after this guy who was rowing as fast as he could to get away from that yep. boat. Man, I that doesn't been matter like twenty he, miles doesn't away. Matter if he turned into fog or anything, you can no. he, he can't do and, it. Okay, as fog, he could not touch the water. It is the water. Water purifies, and when it's running, it doesn't allow stagnation. Dracula yeah. is <laughs> stagnation. He is rot. And on His, top of that, as a fog, he'd have been, hey, look at that fog. It's like floating four feet off the water. No, yeah. you know. And he yeah. should have been subject to wind. Bye. To wind, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, well, my biggest complaint, though, was the fact that as much as he, ha- he had her as the his feeding bag, he should have been so, like, as he fed, he should have gotten stronger. He should have gotten younger. stronger and younger. That's throughout not, Dracula the book. Not Nosferatu eats. style Dracula. That was oh my gosh, it ticked me off. It's like, and I'm like why? a traditionalist. You know, I'm a traditionalist. 
yes, you can have some kind of leeway with the story to tell the story you want, but don't change the fundamental part of it. I love the idea of the doctor. I truly yeah, did. Yeah, I did too. That was a great character. But the doctor surviving and then meeting up with Dracula in the bar, setting up that like antagonistic he's gonna be relationship. Helsing. Yeah, he's going to be Von Helsing. Exactly. I was like, please don't say his name. Do not make him Von Helsing. No. Maybe Dr. Seward. I could see him adopting a new name and going to yeah. work at the uh, the mental institution trying Abby, to hide uh, who uh, he is. So, anything else. Perfect, Abby. Leave Von Helsing alone. Um, but I mean, other than that, we both loved it. It was, yeah, it was a, a great good movie. popcorn horror movie. I know? mean, it, the characters were likable. It was an, an enjoyable set piece. But there was things even in that that were like as much as people are superstitious and some of the things that were going on in that boat, oh man, there would have been people up in an uproar and they were not like that in this film at all. Yeah, it um, was like they would just wake up and, oh, hey, Tom's dead. Oh my God, Tom's dead. And it was like five seconds later, they're like, okay, back to back to stuff as it is. Like, yeah. Or how about like you're on watch and you see something like that mm -hmm. and then, oh, I heard a noise. I'm going to walk over <laughs> You just saw something that terrified the hell out of you. No, no, no. Nope. I'm out. No. I'm out. Yeah. Was, um, like, uh, but the I, part with the boy that I was, uh, I was like, yes. man, are you going <laughs> to do this? Are you really going to do this? And they did it. I was like, man, that is fantastic. And then the girl at the end, because yeah. that's how I would want to go. You know, it was very, very 30 days a night with that scene with her. And then, I just I felt like for one, I'd love to see this continuing, like them doing more stories that take place within the chapters of the correspondence and stuff but like Yeah, you could do a whole on. you could do a whole movie just on um Jonathan Harker well, going to meet Dracula. Jonathan Harker, but even give Renfield some due. Right. And I know that they've done that before they've done Renfield movies. Well, especially the new um, film movie, which is really good. I finally got to see but that too. But I would love to see the Jonathan Harker story, and including the wolf in the graveyard and the vamp female vampire. Do his whole story arc. Then eventually end it with the final fight with Dracula. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sorry. Uh, don't make it a friggin' uh, love story. Only his love, her love, can kill him and let him be at rest. It was not the airplanes that shot him down or the mile long drop to the hard pavement at the ground it was beauty that killed the beast no i think he was the sudden stop at the end of the fall that's not what that killed that's, the beast no no no. that's not what happened in a tv show for the hulk he fell off an airplane or in a helicopter and, and, and crashed and broke his back and he died yeah Sorry. did you guys see that there's an artist i follow and he's on facebook and he does these really great paintings of, char of characters except there was one he did recently and i was like mm, ew. I think, uh, and it was Hulk, butt naked, jumping over a crowd of humans that were trying to fight him with explosive diarrhea. Oh, oh why? And I was like, uh, uh, can, I, I got to take my eyes out, but it's still in my head. All right. Now I have to ask, is that nuclear waste? It's going to yeah. be. I yeah, mean, he I gave think. Betty cancer because they were stuck in each other and his radioactive yeah, killed her. So, okay. Um, Moving on. This, yeah, we'll move on from this. So <laughs> we didn't talk about uh, kind of like the Hulk talk about Castlevania on. Nocturne at all. Uh, we didn't get to discuss Godzilla minus one. I know Dad has I haven't seen it yet. I want to watch that so bad. Yeah, it is. It is it I, is without it is without hyperbole the, the best, best Godzilla movie. Yeah, I know. And it I is know. the best movie of all of 2023. I'm sorry. Yes. It's the best movie. I know the creator was good, but this movie there okay, there's some points and I'm glad they're doing what they're doing with the second release of this film because they're going to be touching up some of the CGI and they're going to turn it in black and white. Uh to kind of get you can hide original. you can hide a lot of mistakes in black and white. Yeah. Plus if you're going to do a black and white movie, D 
do want it's a period piece where it's appropriate. It Correct. Um, and it is. And it also plays homage to the original Godzilla the, yeah. film. Um, but that film was great. The actors are great. They're just the setting, the experience was amazing. Um, the only thing I regret is not being able to go see it a second time. And I'm going to go watch it a couple times whenever it comes out in black and white. But it is fantastic. And it's um, still up here in theaters. I've just got to get back on my side of the town. The, um, but on top of that, so going back from what I was talking about before, we didn't get to talk about Castlevania. I enjoyed it, but there was, I have reservations because they took liberties with the story that Are you they talking about the anime or the new game? The anime. 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 Okay. Mm, yeah. Uh, the highlight of it was the ending for me. I mean, I really liked it. Oh yeah, having when I, I when Alec, you know who I was shows like, up. Ah, yes, that was yeah, great. That was worth that was worth all that torture torture. But he did technically he doesn't even show up in the game. I mean, on top of that, it's like they didn't even like it sets up the events of um Rondo of Blood. It technically said it's like well, it's like it's running into symphony, right? Because Rondo. Well, no. Was... Um, so the thing goes is the story that goes on isn't even like the main story of what the game is about. They're like, this is prior to because like Dracula hasn't been resurrected yet. And, um, you know, even though they did kidnap Maria and uh, I, the other character, the other girl's name, I can't remember at the moment. But that was the whole reason why Richter went off to go. Storm Dracula's castle was the castle was to rescue them. So rescue, yeah. yeah. Um, it, and it, it was it was really good. The animation was good. I really liked the characters. I liked what was going on. But it was like, okay, why do we do this or why is this in here? It it almost made me feel like what the Mortal Kombat remake movie was. It was like, so there's going to be a a tournament in this movie, right? We're not just like kind of building an army for the for the raiden to oh, oh oh you mean the sub zero movie yeah yeah the sub zero no, yes yeah. it's a sub zero movie yes yes yeah i mean because sub zero is like like for for as garbage as that movie is i sub zero has never been better no no yeah I'm watch the see. animated the animated hey, movies are hey, really Cole, good uh, we, we, we talked about this who or cole his abilities are plot armor just yes, well, like you know what? It's, yeah, armor. yeah. I are making fun now, but when we get Judge Dread co combat in the yes. next one, yeah, y'all are going to be regretting those words. Yeah, Carl Urban shows up. Carl Urban is Johnny Cage. If as long as he punches somebody in the nuts, what's great is we're finally going to get a character who's a burnout alcoholic in a, a shadow of the man he used to be. But he kicks right. instead of dying halfway through <laughs> to sacrifice himself so a young person can take over. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, actually, and somebody asked him, I'm are we going to get a tournament in this? And they said, yes, we will see a tournament. We will see the handing off of Sub-Zero. We will hand see a new scorpion introduced, somebody taking the the, the mantle. We're going to see um, the return of Kano and Liu Kang, who died <laughs> before the tournament ever happened. So um, we're going to find out that when you die in this universe, it doesn't necessarily mean that you die. So maybe it's dun, taking dun, dun, a while. Dun, dun, I will give them the second dun, dun, movie dun. first. Dun, 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 dun. I'm, I'm going to need to see who's going to show them. up with the Dragon Balls. Right. Right, that's that. That's what I need. I'm, I'm, with with as bad as they burned me on that first one, because man, I was all in on that first one, and then I sat down and started watching. I was like, wait, <laughs> wait, what? Wait, we're we're giving an what the hell is this? Get we're giving over. an explanation for the fact that they have powers. Like, why, why? I, why is I this never, done? I never gave a shit. What is what is this? What is happening? And then yeah, you get to the end, and I was just like, "Wow, this is that was bad." So I'm gonna need to see something. I'm I'm gonna need to see just like a, a 15 minute clip of Carl Urban being amazing to sell me on going to watch <laughs> it, that movie. 
I want to see the first thing as he rides up on a motorcycle and halfway through the film, he's still got the motorcycle helmet on. And eventually at the end, he takes it off. <laughs> yes. And because we know the we man is not afraid movie the whole time. to keep his face I, look, covered. I want, I don't look, they burned me with that, that mortal Kombat movie. I'm hoping it's going to be good, but I just want dread too. That's all I care about. Yeah. Um, Wait, especially see. before he gets so old. And then it, you know, it, instead of uh, what was it that Judge Dredd it's was gonna... from something AD, yeah, twenty nine AD. It's Geritol AD. I'm getting too old for. As far as like, I don't know about Mortal Kombat. I I'm burnt out with it. I after playing Mortal Kombat one, and how good that story is, there's nothing that this movie is going to be able to do to like kindle that because it's really good. Yeah. Um, they did a fantastic job. Um, and I really like this new world with um Liu Kang being the fire god. Um I don't know. And it's like I know when we're watching movies and stuff, I'm getting to the point where I, I just see when things are gonna be that whole hey, look. This water bottle is going to be relevant later in the episode or the movie. You know, it's just like the plot devices because they're lazy at telling good story. Um, what was what it? Did we're they watching. Do well, we're, we're, well, I was watching, which is what I was going to bring up is that I, we watched uh, Gran Turismo, really good movie, directed by. Neil Bloom Camp, which was fantastic. I didn't even know it was him who directed it. Really good movie. But in the movie, they literally set up a couple things in the beginning of the movie that pay off at the end of the movie and explains why it succeeded. But, you know, I didn't realize that the, the movie was based on a true story that happened um, yeah. back in 2008. You're talking uh, about the, the, the kid who... Uh... Yeah, won the race. Won, won the drive. racing game and then got to the extra driver or race the car. Drive the car, yeah. Great that film. Was... David Harbour is great, and so is um I, I'm surprised Douglas. you didn't under, didn't know that because that was the whole selling point. When you saw them in the interviews, when they were promoting it, they were talking mm-hmm. about the 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 being a real story, having them involved and everything in it. Um well, I didn't pay attention, Dad. Remember, like, like everything with that was going on with the my tooth and the stuff in the year. I just didn't pay attention. I knew the movie was coming out, and I was going to watch it. I mean, I did enjoy the games, but I haven't really been keeping up with a lot of stuff as far as the trailers. Now, I I get that. I absolutely agree with that because because of social media, everybody wants to spoil everything. So I'll well, watch- they weren't trying to spoil. That was the selling point. Yeah, it's and I remember based on a true stuff. story. I remember seeing all that stuff early on. I'm not interested in it, so I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. But at the same time, like Vinny was saying, if you don't, you don't want to get too invested in something because the trailers can be one thing, but then you'll have all these people spoiler, spoiler. Oh, look at the costumes. Look at the behind the scenes footage and things like that. That's that's kind of like be- the 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 between point of the of your guys's points. You know, you want to be able to know enough about it, know the history of it, and everything like that to be invested in it. But at the same time, you got to be careful about how much you watch because it'll spoil it for you. And then, yeah, I I think with movies like Godzilla, the right. um, Roland Emmerich film. Oh, okay. 2000, I mean, the 1998. Godzilla. Most most movies, okay, it, one, they'll try to tell you it's a true story based on a true story, and it's only that much is a true story. Or, and that's to get you into the audience and to set in a seat because you think you're going to be watching something and actually happen. The other is that they hide things. So if you're watching a trailer and it looks too good to be true, it generally is. Exactly. Because they put everything in the in the trailer. And sometimes yeah. if you look at what they did with Indiana Jones, watch the progression of trailers that came out for the story. It yeah. wasn't until a certain point in the trailer that you realized what they were doing to Indy. And that helped 
because there were so many rumors coming out and everybody who was spreading the rumors trying to warn people were talked down to you know right. you're lying you don't know what you're talking about look the first tree it was really him he's riding the horse and everything that's him. you know it's cgi heavy um y'all complained about a refrigerator but you're gonna have him jumping around in a horse in a subway um an 80 year old then man. all of a sudden you start seeing it transition because they wanted to prepare the audience for that transition so they were subtly changing it to being her and her little comments toward indy her talking down to Indy, making him look like the old fool and she's going to save the day and it got him in trouble pre-sales is about everything is about pre-sales now most movies come out with the say the, the the box office guaranteed because the hype puts people buying the ticket yes, projection when people start watching trailers and they start seeing something, they start going, you know, I'll cancel my ticket. I don't want it. And when they start seeing those po- box office drop, they try to fix it. So sometimes we get a much better film because something was released. I mean, look look at Sonic. Yeah, that oh, yeah. was well, okay. okay. So right, that's an exception of the rule because th- that, most that people... having them release this stuff out and the hype allows us to either complain or make the studio understand because we live in an age of politics now where yeah. culture is what sells everything so if you're going to wait until you go see a movie in the theater before you know anything about it you're just feeding the machine right and it's too late for you to complain because you've already put the cash in their pocket right mm-hmm. it's like Vinny sells all the time speak with your wallet you yeah. have to speak with your wallet because that's the only thing that's going to money talks and you can say as much as you can to tell the world, Hey, this is going to be a bad movie or a bad product, but you got to speak with your wallet. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, if you're the only person who does it, it doesn't, you know, it may not succeed, but the more people you can tell the word of mouth to carry to, for them to do the same thing will change your product. Right. But um, what helps is having that evidence because we now live in a where anybody can say anything they want. You yes. need to have that visual evidence to go, oh, you know what? They're right. How many times have we heard that a, a script got leaked? Oh, that's not the script. That was not what was going to be in it. You know, we had we that was a test script. You know, it's nothing like that. You go see the movie and what is it? Exactly, exactly like, like the script. You know, they, you know. Well, how many times truth in I advertising mean, doesn't exist anymore? Right. It's uh, like, go ahead, Vinny. How many times have we sat here and talked and discussed stuff that was going on with Star Wars, and it turned out to be true? Yeah. And so a lot of times it was because we found out things before some people were finding out. And Indiana Jones is another one. We knew it was going to happen down to the T, and that movie is exactly as much of a garbage, other than them changing the ending and we and found they, out that was true too because... and then they lied about how many endings right remember and then now what do we know because it actually came out there were over five endings filmed for it so all those rumors were true all along mm-hmm. and they made those people look like fools and liars right and then you got kevin feige who will sit there and look at the camera and say, no, no, this isn't going to be this. And this isn't going to be this. And then you turn around, movie comes out. It's exactly that. Well, and remember Kevin Feige though, will fire his entire team and start over. Yeah. Yeah. Disney ain't do Disney will do that, but they hide it and they hire somebody worse. Or they go and hire someone like Ron Howard and expect him to save a solo film which that was already filmed saved. was basically yeah. filmed oh he went back right. and reshot three quarters of it because yeah. and it, it wasn't working it wasn't functioning it and that help. makes you wonder what was cut well you know we only had one real good star wars film and that was rogue one rogue one as far as and that was who garth edwards garth edwards yeah, yeah. And guess what he did? Godzilla. So the man knows what he's doing, but apparently we don't care. But remember, these movies aren't made for us. They're made for the general public. And, you know, and that's the thing. When you alienate your 
your constant flow of income because that's not who you want to advertise to. That's what's put you, put you in these dire straits that they're in right now. Yeah, Disney. but they're still making that because of course they are. It's they not to. It's not. They're not our our stories anymore. They're not. Some films. The uh, it was the fan base who kept those franchises going. Absolutely. You know, through thick and thin, selling of products. Some of it was mediocre. Some of it was great. It was the fan base that was always the focus. Look, we've got to please the fans and anybody new we can bring in will be great. We have to make this generational so that the people who are fans bring their kids and then those kids will bring kids. Now it's all about pop culture and that instant gratification and attracting people who spend a lot of money because it's popular too. You can go to any con and you can see people buying stuff because they've heard it's hot and they don't know anything about it. Or they want those autographs from those actors that they didn't give two thoughts about when they were, uh, you know, in high school. But, oh, because it's popular now, they're going to jump on it because it's the thing to do. Right. Um, I got to say, let's put the people in the lines. I was weird as a kid. No. And for no. me, weird was good. You know what? And I was weird and proud. I was a fan. I was a geek. I was all these things when everybody made fun of me. Now the same people who made fun of me trip over themselves to spend a ton of money buying the same stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? So well, it makes you know, it I'm proud of it. Where does that, that, who, you wear who's that a, as who a was badge. a natural collector who's been a collector since I was – I was born and it was just like indoctrinated into and I can't find these things because we now have scalpers that go around and grab the toys so they can help out their friends or uh, they don't help out their friends. They help out their pocket. They're they're looking at their bottom line. They're not looking at the collector value. Um, They're looking at bottom line. But did you tell them what happened at Ollie's or was it Ross where the guy comes up and goes, these are all mine. Oh yeah, no, a whole you, peg full yeah, of that was you. That was you, Dad. You were at. The, I know. I did. Raw, you tell me what happened to me at Ross. So yeah. I'm walking in looking for stuff for him and me. Guy goes up and goes, "Oh, this is all mine. It's on the peg, right? It's on the peg." I said, "Excuse me." He goes, "This is all mine." Now. I said, "No, this is on the peg. I will take what I want, and you will take what's in your." He had already had a cart full of them. And he, I, you know, he was like, whoa, this dude is not playing around. And I started going looking through him and put the stuff down. Okay, Vince wants this. I want this, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, dude, I didn't want him to start any trouble. I was like, you know, I was just saying there's some things there I want. I said, yes, but there's things in your cart that I wanted. And I'm not walking over and taking it out of your cart. You know what? I'll just take this with me. You don't get to pull off the, the peg. You don't get to come in here and tell us we can't have something. These are here for the public. I'm paying my money's good. It's just as good as yours. And, you know, I'm sorry. I'm not an ass. But what you did was wrong. And right. he goes, oh, I'm just a collector. I'm And I'm buying stuff for friends. Oh, who yeah, want cool. figures. I was like, I understand that. Believe me, I've been there. But I've never told somebody, you can't have this because I'm getting it. When it's and so I took my stuff and, stuff and I went up and paid. And then we were standing in line and I was in one line. He was in this other line. And he couldn't look me in the friggin' eye. And I was like, you know, that is what is wrong with this problem. We no longer have toy stores. So they've made them into a commodity. Yeah. We have the same problems with speculation that destroyed the comic industry destroyed you know in the energy industry now it's in the figures it never works out i mean it's never done good for gasoline prices you know um and because there's no competition so we're all fighting for a a a resource that is dwindling Mm -hmm. and the manufacturers are getting rich off of it and they could care less about us right they, they, they switched what the commodity is. They made the product the focus and the commodity the people. 
And instead of competing with each other store wise for who's got the best product, they make everybody else compete for what product there is. Well, competition is what capitalism is built on. Competition <laughs> keeps prices low. Yeah. Demand drives the competition and re- helps regulate the price, but competition helps. The, it's it's alternating pressures that kind of kept everything where we could afford it. Now right. everything's out of balance. Yeah, because they flipped and, the script. Yeah, we can't afford anything. And so right. you've you got toy manufacturers manufacturing. Thing. Yeah, you put a five of one thing, you got a thousand people. Okay, They're, then they can justify bringing up the prices and inflating stuff because, oh, look at all the people who want this, but they've only put out this many of this item, knowing that those people are going to come in and fight for it. Well, but and there's they, also another they, spectrum. They've taken away the, comp- the competition. They've taken away the speculation. They've taken and they've inflated it and re- rewritten the narrative to where they want it to be to justify themselves. I remember right. during a hurricane well, when we had to go to Uncle Gene's. I'll just say this real quick. We went in and we needed water. Debbie asked us to try to find water to bring. Went in and a gal- the gallon of water was $8 a piece. Right. And I said, why are you price gouging? And it's, it's illegal during an emergency. He goes, no, it's not. Because I raised my prices, I'm guaranteed to have that product on the shelf when people need it. And I was like, no, you're guaranteed to make a profit because people need that. And you're gouging them when that could be life or death for somebody. Um, And I walked out. I wasn't going to pay $8 for a gallon of water. You know, something that is free. Something that you can go to any tap in the in the in the country and supposed to be able to pour it and drink it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, our system's broke, and you can see it in everything. Oh yeah, very broke. So um, back on the the other side of things that I was going to talk about is that how when you remove sources or stores for you to be able to get that are dedicated to that product. And then you make it to where it's in these big box retailer stores. It makes it a little harder because these stores don't want to have product that's just going to sit on the shelves. So they order less and less of these product because they know that they can't move it. So right. which goes back into that whole thing with like Star Wars. When we had the sequel trilogy with those figures, we had tons of Rose and, and Ray and all the other characters that no one wanted that just sat on the shelves. And it, it made it impossible for you to go in whenever the next wave came out to be able to get the next figures because they still had the other figures that didn't sell. So they weren't rotating out the product um, because then they would they lost money on it. And well, so I mean, in fighting the, for retail space within a, a small like row, like because remember when you used to go to the toy sections in some of these stores, there would be like three to you know eight aisles of just different toys and now it's like oh we're dedicated down to two sections and you you hope that you're going to find the things you want or you go there for like the last three months and you find the same figures over and over again and on top of that there's other places that get the product that you're looking for that doesn't trickle down to here in texas or other why and the, the question is why? And it's because they know they zone the product. They mm-hmm. ship it to areas where they can't. OK, we can't have all these figures on the shelf because then people go, well, why is it twenty four ninety five? So they limit what a store will get because they know they can make their 24, 25, 28. Everything else is shipped off into these other zoned areas where they sit on a shelf. And then you get them there. You, uh, oh, five dollars. Who lives there? Why is it there? Why aren't you shipping those into the regions where there's high populations? Who would buy that? No, they're sitting in Timbuktu, you know, row to row to row. And this isn't new. We did. We saw it with Optimus Prime when we went through Arkansas. There's yeah, lots of things that ago. are going Back on. 2007. The problem is, is that we used to have competition. Big. Yeah, Toy stores carried everything. 
So the big box stores were trying to compete with the big toy stores. So they had to carry more product. Toy stores are gone. They don't want to carry stock anymore. Everybody wants to uh, supply by order. You know, you order it, we'll ship it to you. Yes. You know, so there's no, there's less and less demand for it to be on shelves. So we're not finding it. And people become desperate. They go online and you, know, you see a markup of a figure that's really not worth more than $19, but it's selling for $45. Somebody's going to be go, you know what? I haven't seen that anywhere. It's here. I'm just going to go ahead and get it. I'm going to it justifies the price card. for what things being. Yes. Right. Or, so or they put on a again, card. it's like you were saying, we should, we as a consumer have lost the ability to understand we had all the power. Mm-hmm. We could boycott. We could refuse a product. We At one point in this country, we could change commercials, television shows by what brands advertise on it. The power was with the consumer. It's been flipped. Mm-hmm. Now we're chasing after product, and they're just raking in the money left and right. And yeah, this, unless we start different. using our pocketbook and just go, you know what? I'm done. It's like I told you, I'm not, I'm, I'm done with Star Wars, I'm not buying anything else, no more figures, no more. I got the ones that I love and that's it. I'm going to move on to the next product, you know, because there's nothing there for me, you know, um, right. and yeah. there's always new, something new coming out that I might not have given attention to if I was just working hey, on, Scarlet. I see. Hey, you. Um, because I was so, oh, I got to get the Star Wars thing. Well, now because I'm not buying that, my eyes are open to, hey, you know what? I might get this. You know, it, you know, I'm making my choice. <laughs> Trust no you. in me. Yeah, no, and that's that's the biggest thing right now. I mean, you, none of this stuff, unfortunately, is for kids, and they cheap out on making the toys for the kids. Like, but. So going back to the whole thing about when when they move these products around and they're because they can't move it, what did we see this Christmas? We saw an influx of all the toys we couldn't find being shoved into the outlet stores. Ross, yeah, Ollie's, uh, Dee Dee's discount, um, big lots, Marshall, even Marshall's. Marshalls, and it was like. Wow, I'm getting like GI Joes for five bucks. When did I get GI Joes for five bucks? Oh yeah, uh, back in the '90s, like you know. So yeah, but the sad part is, is that you and I both know we've. <laughs> I can't go to any more Rosses. I don't want to go to Ollie's anymore. I don't want to because everyone we went was picked through Rude. because right, everybody saw it. Time. You know, the minute you saw it, they were like, "Hey, look what I found!" and then. There's this like shifting of the planet as everybody ran to the closest office and bought it up. And then here you are coming after work, you walk in and it looks like, remember, they look like friggin' explosions. Yeah. Stuff was scattered everywhere. And you're like, well, I bet we don't find anything. Can going? I say this? Ollie's, it depends on where the market is. There's one 20 minutes from here that nobody picks through. We'll send you a shopping I'm not list and you let us know. Yeah. I'm yeah, not gonna me say know. the town. I'm not gonna say that I'm not gonna say the city, the town, but it's right there in the open and it's the only one in the area. And every time I've gone in there to just look at stuff in general, nothing is picked. It, okay. it's, you it's let all us know. We will right we will. there. At, at Christmas will. time, we'll I went into Ollie's. Well. I went into Ollie's, I was talking to him on the phone. And there were families buying stuff for their kids. And right. I was going through going, oh, they should give that away for free. Nobody's going to buy that. Uh, that same thing has been here for five months. Nobody will buy that. You know, $3, not for, they, I, they should pay me to take that off. <laughs> and this lady was looking at me and I was like, none of this stuff is worth anything. And that's why it's still here. Well, they you, have the, a section of Marvel. They too. have a section of Marvel. That every time I've gone in, what? The same Marvel Maybe. figures. They yeah. never, they're still in the same spot. It's, they collect dust. They've never been moved. 
Well, and remember, I'm... Clamp Champ was there. I was like, I'm gonna get this. He's fifteen bucks. They like, knew which like... ones were worth certain amounts because they had Muckman, fifty thousand of them, and he was three ninety five. You know, I was uh, like, you find one good figure, and it's the fifteen dollar one. And then the bad part was going at Christmas time because they gave you this big discount. Oh yeah, they marked up off. everything up so that once you got the discount, it was what it was originally. When you, if you'd have walked in any other day. But this is definitely something that we probably need to discuss on the a uh, little bit further in the Why We Collect podcast. But yeah, I just think this is a we dead had horse. a big thing with Hasbro recently with them laying off people and this is a big indicator of it you think about how much merchandise that is just sitting there they didn't get any money from it and it didn't well, make it didn't and make they flooded anything. the market at christmas time they flooded the market with figures people had went and bought those paying 30 dollars or or more and all of a sudden finding in target or online for, for nine dollars that makes you mad you know yeah. you're like oh why should i buy it when it comes out i'll just wait, wait until, until they hit hard or, times uh, and then they'll they'll lower the price um i but, mean i i agree with what you said about you know uh you know it's sitting there not making any money. Thing is, being having been a business owner and stuff like that, you realize that the only people that are making money when stuff sits there is the original company, the Hasbro's, the whatever. They got paid for their stuff, all right, because they got the seven day net thing that goes on. Mm -hmm. And then so. you got those people in those places where we know what you're talking about where they were so proud of what they wanted and they knew what price they wanted, it would sit on the same shelf for two years. Yeah. And every three months you come and go, you know, I'll buy it for this. I'll buy it. No. Yeah, no, and, that, no. and which is what Ollie's does. Say, listen, I know you got all this stuff and I know you want to move it. We're going to bulk buy it. And Ollie's will take that risk because whatever they do with it from there, who knows? But well, they but give it to kids. You know what? Kids are supposed to play yeah. with this stuff anyway. Give it to kids. Give it to I children mean, for yeah. you know, toys for tots. You, you know what? All this stuff instead of setting there and never going to be sold or ending up in a um, uh, a dump a somewhere, a landfill. Yeah. Give it to kids. Yeah. Let them play with it. Maybe that kid will grow up and want your product. So, but that's the thing, though. This is the problem that Hasbro's facing, and, and it's starting to trickle down to some of these other companies. When you flood the market with product people don't want and it sits on their shelves, they're less likely to buy more product from you. So you can't, you, you, you have this bad rapport. But the problem is also is that the price, when a figure that should cost $20, may, I, I would even go as low as $15, is $25. And it doesn't have any of the good articulation. And on top of that, you took out the plastic window that allowed you to see the figure inside. Right. That, that was it. that was not a big economic driver. That was an environmental driver. But uh, in saying what you're saying, they are reuse. There is so much reuse going on at Hasbro. It is yeah. not funny. True. And so they are reusing the same molds over and over again for different figures. So their costs are coming down. Yeah. And because they're not having to create new dyes, new models, new molds. So their profits are going up while the product is coming down. Right. So and all, and all their money is going into the packaging and the advertising. So here's the thing about that. Why aren't they going and making a consumer-friendly his tank? They've already made the money for it. And they're making exclusive products for the guys who help kickstart it. Make a consumer version product. You already have the molds. You're going to have because of the of aftermarket. They are backing their aftermarket clients because they don't work for the consumer. They're not in it for I you anymore. They're in it for those aftermarket dealers. Because exactly. I mean, you could have you could have a a a little bit hard to justify Gal Galactus, which I would love to have, but like. Well, not Galactus, Unicron, but Galactus could be justified. You just put out a figure yeah, without the extra they did a Galactus. They've already done it before. 
You could do that with the Sentinel. You could do that with the Dragonfly. You could. They do did that. do it with the Sentinel. There's three Sentinels, and then there's the the smaller version. Right, the Legends. This, that, I'm talking about the Haslab. You can literally take the mold and make a consumer friendly version, put it out on the market. Right, and you, and with 3D printing, you know the pro- costs are coming down, and the print and the molds are just as solid as they were. 20 years ago it's just made cheaper and made exactly to what you want see eventually 3d printing is going to hurt them yeah beyond eventually, the, yeah. you know so, and so some of them now, will adapt it i think like they with new resins new plastics new uh, ceramic printers you know it's going to get to where the money will be in buying the pre-made designs the the software Mm-hmm. And you won't have to do it yourself. You just go out and buy the toy. Right now, that's still expensive. If you wanted to build like uh, the Lost in Space Jupiter 2, or you wanted to do something that isn't just market ready, I it's going to cost say... you about $200 from somebody to design it for you. It hasn't, that price hasn't come down yet. But what is it, Ertel, and who are some of the Polar Lights and some of these other model makers? When they put out a new model, we could go buy a model at ten bucks, and it would be fully detailed, beautiful. I mean, you, I mean, and when we were making sci- science fiction movies, we were going out and t- to model shops and to stores, and they would shops. kit bash and just come. I just bought four hundred boxes of this. We're going to come and make it into things. You couldn't do that no it would be cost prohibitive yeah. because there's models coming out at 250 and 400 dollars yeah well, like it's a model well remember that that's the whole thing for like gunpla with gundams you know because they're they're designed in a way to build to be able to play with they're not just you know just models but the higher end you go with like the Masterpiece side. I mean, the well, the yeah, it's the yeah, masterpiece. The, so or you, you've got you've got master grade, right, and like master real grade, grade yeah. and all of that. But it really yeah. like with the gun plus stuff, that's actually easier to get into because yeah. all you're getting it for is. the more expensive stuff is just it's got more articulation. There's more pieces to put together. But if you don't really care about that, you just like want to have a cool version of heavy arms or you know uh, the iron blooded mm-hmm. orphans or whatever just sitting on your desk. You can go and buy, you know, for a pretty decent price, um, one of those kits and and some of the third party stuff that's been coming out has been pretty awesome. Like, I know uh, I don't think I showed it on the podcast, but there was one that was a, uh, uh, it's based on Thor, and man, I bought it for like sixty bucks, and that thing is, I mean, it's a tall, tall, you know, figure that was really fun to put together. It lights up, does all kinds of cool stuff. It comes yeah, with, like, see, a, that's the great. Its the... box is like a diorama. Dude, it cost me like 60 bucks and that was it. Like, yeah. boom, it was done. And there was a lot of quality and a lot of uh a lot of value out of that for, you know, what what you got out of it. And for something like that 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 like Hasbro had put out, they'd probably be charging like what y'all are you guys are talking about like three you know, three figures on it at least. Oh, well, they haven't done a Haslab that was inexpensive yet. I mean, well, I, I was going to say that like with kickstarter there could be a point where some of these board game companies they go all right well we will do the cardboard production but if you have a 3d printer here's the files to yeah print your own figures and you can print print the ones you like yeah yeah the Uh, only thing that's another thing like i love gaming i love rpgs but man there are so many out there at some point it's going to collapse in on itself it's too heavy um you know i just like you can't used to be you could walk in a target and there'd be like one shelf for maybe an aisle with some you know some games on it now it's a full shelf that runs almost half the length of the store and then still two other shelves where there's games and those aren't video games that's all board games right card games yeah you know, i was like mm-hmm. mm, i think you you're oh you're you know we we have an america that is struggling because we have so much vying for our attention you walk in 
I don't even look over there anymore because you know, oh, I want that. I want that. I want that. I want that. And then they go on my shelf. You can go on Kickstarter right now, and I guarantee you, there's you know 50 million board games that people are trying to kickstart. Um, one of the more you know prominent uh, uh, board game creators and and kick, or honestly, you know, Kickstarter folks is a uh, cool minis or not, right? Come on, the zom- the Zombicide people, and they just recently did uh, their deceased. You know, the DC version of Zombicide. Zombies, yeah. And it was the first Kickstarter they've done in a while that couldn't even clear three million in terms of, of you know interest in it. And a lot, a lot of people were a lot of people were uh, blaming it on the fact that uh uh the Marvel zombies hadn't even like Marvel zombies got kickstarted before that. It hadn't even been delivered to the majority of people. So uh, and like six months ago they had just recently done a Kickstarter for an expansion to uh, the fan, the um, Green Horde, and all that. So it's like they're, I, I don't know if they just need the cash flow that bad, but like some of these companies are just churning out stuff as fast as they can, it seems like, and not really letting the market settle down. Catch up, you know, yes. in between their releases. Yes, exactly. And it's like, man, y'all, and that's no, the problem like, with Hasbro. There's no guys, yeah, We can't, we can't be shilling out three, four hundred dollars, you know. Every no. three months on a whim for crap like this, it's ridiculous. Uh, you guys were saying that a year ago when yeah. all the Kickstarter stuff was going on. You and Vinny oh, both yeah. were saying that there's yeah. no, there's no downtime, there's no reset. It's constantly want the cash, want the cash, and you guys had to pick and choose. And and the the thing that sucks, especially about Kickstarter, is you know I like you know I'm not into the toy stuff and and all that. So, but uh, these board games through Kickstarter are are just as bad in terms of like secondary market. Cause like, for instance, you know, Zombicide again, the almost Sold out again. almost three quarters of the stuff that you get is Kickstarter exclusive. Right. And they yes. bundle it all together in a single box, like all the Kickstarter ex- exclusive stuff that came out for it. And man, you try to go and look on eBay, like later on, uh, whenever I was trying to find, I had missed out on, um, they did the Ninja Turtles, for second edition and i went looking for those boxes it's a box of four miniatures and a handful of cards and there were people that were asking 150 200 bucks for that for per box so if you wanted to get all four turtles you're going to be out three four hundred dollars on the secondary market and that's insane and they're never going to come out with that stuff again you know they've, they've done all kinds of exclusive stuff and they've never given any kind of hint that they're you know, gonna roll back around and, and issue it out there. No, so man, it gets not. it gets psychotic out there. It's it's crazy. Um, and if you're a smart shopper, you find like a comic shop, a gaming shop, and they all have a sale at least once a year mm-hmm. where it's buy two, get one free. Yeah. Or something. so um and the the hopefully you can time it right where you can get two really good games like at eighty dollars a pop. And then you can get another game because normally it's the cheapest one is free. So try to get games that are all relatively the same price since you make money and it lowers the price of your other games. Yeah. Um, but like Zombicide, the Marvel Zombies, uh, the DC, I have, I don't want to play them. There, I, there's no want there. You know, I like the Western. I like some of the other ones, uh, you know, because well, they have the I'm, Night of the Living Dead. Uh, Night of the Living Dead, yeah. I need to but pick that up. That's still on their side, I believe. It's yeah. because I um, grew up watching George Romero. I have a connection to zombies that a lot of kids, a lot of people nowadays don't. Right. Or what they consider a zombie is not really a zombie. I mean, like uh, in 4K... Yeah, they got zombie warriors. Well, you know, in my book, zombies don't pick up machines. I mean, machine guns, laser blasters, and carry uh, axes and swords. You know, um, can't be fun either. Well, did you see that? Uh, they're looking at doing a third of the twenty-eight days later. Oh yeah, yeah, I, that. I yeah. saw that. I was like, why? I mean, as serious. long as it's better than the second one, I'll be okay. But that second yeah. one was, was god rough. awful. No, it, it's yeah. got twenty eight days later, twenty eight weeks, weeks later. later. What? So what's this one going to be? Twenty months later. Twenty months later. 
at that, that point, everybody's dead. Yeah. Well, at least in that, that world, they died. They starved. Yeah, you just let them and starve. They, and they weren't the zombie. They weren't living again. dead. Yeah. You, uh, it would just be like having a world full of a plague that when you died, you you could, you know, I guess like in Walking Dead, originally they were kind of hinting at that everybody carried the virus in them and yeah, you could live as long as you didn't get an infection. And if you died, then you'd come back. Yeah. Um, but you could live out a full life. And as long as somebody popped a cap in you <laughs> right there at the end, like your best friend in a mall, you know. The uh, you know what I'm talking about, the reference. Yes, Don. Don. Okay, thank you. Just making sure. Um, I have that. Um, I have the soundtrack on pre-order, and uh, the original on vinyl. But you know, it was like when when we did the running zombies for the first time. I was like, technically, that's over. If you've got running zombies, if you got zombies who can climb walls, if you got zombies who can parkour. Yeah, you're you're done. Just how and you know, <laughs> make sure you don't become one of them. And that was the whole point of that hidden ending. Was to show that there was no hope. You know what happened at the very very end, right after the credits. Yeah. Okay. They Some people to, don't. They got to that Some people are like what? I said, did you watch? No, I don't watch the credits. You should probably watch the credits. You know. Which At least they got away, but did they? It's funny how both that movie and the original have the most stupidest idea for, all right, we have this ultimate fortress that you can survive in. How do we make it to where the zombies could come in so we can break up this happy home they have? Well, we have bikers that go around putting pies in zombies' faces and they they move the vehicles. And, and, and the other one, it's like, oh, the doggy. It's contagious. We got to get the doggy. We got to go. We're just going to use this doggy to go send food to this guy that's over here. And then, and, oh, and then they let the zombies in. And then they have to leave in their buses. And well, my problem with that was, zombie humans only eat zom- uh, zombies or cannibals, and they only eat other humans. Right. So you'd need zombie dogs to attack the normal dog. Right, the normal dogs. Yeah, that you was- know. And so I. Does that mean like zombie horses would attack zombies. living zombies? Yeah. And can you imagine a movie where it's just zombie squirrels chasing living zombies. squirrels, and they have this big war? It doesn't. Tra- it doesn't even translate to like anybody else. That it doesn't transmute to anybody else, right? But it's all the squirrels. It's fighting just squirrels. Yeah. So all the humans are like, "Wow, this is crazy. What's going on here?" <laughs> you got some redneck in his squirrels. shorts and his cowboy hat and his. Uh, bathrobe with a yeah. ice cooler watching the squirrel war going on in his front yard and you got that one albino squirrel that's the hero of the whole thing the whole thing yeah it's got the I red mean, eyes just looking i mean like, i'll be honest i'd watch it i'd watch yeah, it too I, I, yeah. would, I think i would watch it too somebody's okay. gonna make that movie like, like, Somebody, right, copyright, look, we had lamigaden we can have this copyright downloadable podcast the uh, squirrel apocalypse this all happens on a Backwater, you know, like somebody who lives out in the woods, the apocalypse happens, but it's this the it's the squirrel zombie apocalypse, and he's just watching this stuff go on, and he thinks the world's like this too. Then he's like, "Man, I'm running out of supplies. Let me go to make it into town." And then and there's just real driving it. Everything's in. fine. Everybody's like, "Hey, Bob, did you see the the squirrel apocalypse? Man, it was really cool, but it was gruesome too." And uh, he had a what caused it? A bad nut. A bad nut. <laughs> I want to see what happens if something like that were to happen to gorillas. Uh uh-uh. uh. Nope. A bunch of gorillas? Because <laughs> they I don't want to be I just, I mean, gorillas would these. eventually get smashed apart by the, the living can, ones. Can you're like, oh watch, hey, look, watch this this gorilla's running at this other gorilla. And then you don't see it's the gorilla gross. kind of coming up behind you, and he's running, and you just happen to be in the wrong in place, the wrong direction, and he runs right over you. You know, you know what though? Uh, that that actually does transition at least into uh, one more thing that we haven't talked about. At least I don't think we've talked about. Um, so first off, um, the new Planet of the Apes movie looks actually really, really good. good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And and in reference to that, the director of that movie. Is the one who has been tapped to direct the Legend of Zelda movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
You're now good. again, I don't, I don't know if, if that news had dropped uh, by the time that you know. Now, the if I was him, I would been. make a, a a short joke film. Uh, since all the guy got all the actors and the technology there while he was filming, I would have made a screening film of Legend of Zelda with monkeys. No, it's the Legend of with Link. the apes. The, the Legend of Link. Link. The Legend, Legend of, of Link. Cornelius. I mean, he finds the high sword in the orangutan. forest. What if it's just half an hour of well, hell, hello, oh, and it just holds that right for like half an hour, and or for twenty eight minutes, and the very end, it's like, oh, well, I'm sorry, excuse me, me, princess, yeah, princess. There you go. Uh, don't do that. I hated that from the cartoon. Everybody had to have a catchphrase back then, remember? Yeah. I mean, and he had one of the most annoying. Hey, my it's... paisanos or whatever it was, Mario used to say. Yeah. yeah. All I right. I mean, that's that's gonna be so about the Planet of the Apes. I like how they weren't sure if they were gonna do another. This is supposed to be the final. It ends with the world that Charlton Heston and the original characters could come into. And I, I like that. Because um, the technology in the original Planet Apes, those ships weren't anything super fantastic. Hell, they look like some of the stuff that's being sent to space now by these contractors. Um, so it kind of brings the whole Bring thing around. full circle. We don't have... We have are we getting a time jump where they're looking more humanoid than uh are they're 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 slowly becoming more like they were in the movie. Okay. They start wearing clothes. They start you know up until now they were they were proud to be you know ape. Now they're starting to adopt more. They go into the city for the first time and are looking at it. But um, the humans before with the last movie there was that disease that was making them dumb. Yeah. Well, now they've kind of corrected that they're mute, but they still are smart. Some of them are still smart and you get to see that like Nova was not, a, was not, you know, dumb. She just couldn't, dumb. Talk. she just couldn't talk until the end. And then, you know, that's her big exit. Um, but I like it. If you're going to end it, end it here. And then you can it brings in the original movies and you have one long continuous story. Right. Um well and there's a lot of stuff we need to discuss in another episode. Um so let's go ahead and wrap it up. I know it's pretty late for Colin and David and me, and since we all have well, two of us well, have work and Colin probably well, has work with the church. Actually, and uh and it's not music. a school night for me. This is this is my off Friday week, so Oh, you're yeah. off Friday? Yay, yeah, yeah. But um, it's good having you guys back on, uh, having discussion. We need to do this more often on a regular basis. And this is also me telling myself this. Um, next week, we will definitely go ahead and do our review of finally Batman 89 and discuss that. Um, Don't look at me. <laughs> I had my book first. But no, he had his book first. Vince had it, and then he told me. Well, about but it we also it. need to finish. We need to. I need to be able to finish through uh, Gregory. So if we don't get, I have I have. I keep looking at it, going, "I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'm never going to do this." So yeah, but we definitely have the other. I'm being honest. It's fine. It's. Okay. It's fine. It's not for everybody. Y'all can do an episode without me. It's oh. it's fine. It's not for everybody. That's fine. We'll just we have the David. <laughs> David was looking like I had to read all the damn books, and he's trying to get out of it. I'll be damned if this is going to happen. This is some it's just, the next one like, he's going to suggest is going to be so horrible, and uh, and I'll have to read it. Well, we do have uh, what book three and four for Radiant Black. We need to read and yeah. review um isn't five coming out soon or something i thought it did didn't it didn't they just release one i don't know i haven't looked i've been keeping up i so i heard rumors that they were turning it into an animated that somebody had had picked it up to do you know 
That'd be I hope cool. so. It was. It would be nice. Um, It'd be interesting. So, did anybody before we go out? Did anybody watch the second season of uh, what's his name on HBO? Uh, the Knock of the Superman. Oh, um, incredible or whatever. Invincible. Oh, yeah, yeah. Invincible. Invincible. Yeah. No. I've started it and I'm like, eh, do I care? Well, you know, because uh, I tried to make it through the 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 one about her and the baby and everything. Yeah. And I was like, is this did they take a story that was in it and just kind of give her her own thing? Um, because I didn't read all the Invincibles. Mm. Yeah. Well, but I will watch Monarch. I need to I need to start watching. I yeah. will watch when what's his name dies enough. That he's invulnerable to every one of their attacks, and oh, he just Alan? goes and starts. Yeah, when he starts yeah. just ripping them a new one, I'll watch that <laughs> because I just can't stand a race that is so powerful that there's nothing anybody could do. That I, I don't like. No win, no hope. You know, I guess I'm an old Captain Kirk. You know, right. type character. Yeah. You can't have no hope. All right then. Hopefully, I'll be able to finish Monarch within like a week. We can kind of. You should be that. able to binge it in one day. The last episode it's was this tomorrow. week. Yeah. All right. Now, is that still on just Apple TV? It it's on fun. Apple, but then, if you have Sam, part? if you have Samsung, right? There are a lot of shows on it. If I could afford to add another uh, streaming service, I would, because there's enough on Apple to make me want to get rid of Disney. Disney. Uh, but, um, the, uh, if you have Samsung smart television, they were offering a three month trial for free. Um, if you had LG or one of the other ones, it's only seven days. Okay. So if you want to watch it for free, Wait till the last episode drops. Do get it for trial, the seven day free it. trial. Watch it and you're one and done. Yeah, but I think that. once you do that, you watch some of the other stuff on there, you're going to go, you know what? This is pretty good bargain. Because, man, they're putting some work into their shows and their movies. These aren't low budget. And they're well written. And um, Well, I only want to watch the Tetris movie and Monarch at the moment. So. I'm gonna get to both of those. Yeah. There's there's one I'm I'm curious about. I think it's called Severance. The one where the workers go to work for some random job, but whenever they go in, uh the job like erases all of their memory while, memory, yeah. while they're in there doing the work. And they're doing these like weird random computer, you know, things. And I've Sounds heard like that's paycheck. A, I've heard that's supposed to be really good. Well, um, and the one that's for about the space humanity's trying to get off of the earth because of uh, what's happening to the environment. Um, that one's pretty good for all humans or all something. I can't remember what it's called. For all mankind. For all mankind. Yeah. I believe. Oh, and that, that reminds me, that's another movie I want to talk about when we do the next podcast is, uh, uh, what was it? On Netflix, the one with uh, Ethan Hawke and about uh oh, oh the um this uh, not how it ends um leaving earth or something like that yeah it's the me. the one about the i end. had it i just yeah mm. um, yeah yeah it's getting late we're all getting brain <laughs> getting tired we're but uh david's like i'm still going to be working on these cars while you guys you guys are asleep look man i've been uh, i have Really quick, so that's the other thing. I've been listening to Dune because the trailer for part two came part out. Part two, so, yeah. Uh, now that I have a buddy that's decided to get me back into magic, I realized I have actually a pretty decent amount of worm cards. So I'm thinking of building a a uh, Dune. Warriors, a Warriors, Wizards, and Worms deck semi-inspired uh, <laughs> from Dune. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. So yeah. I've I've gotten through all of my colors that I'm looking for, and I have a giant stack of cards that I need now to whittle down. So yeah, it's going to be a either a very long night or an early morning. We'll see which one it winds up being. Well, you know what? 
you could be here watching a zoo and fighting to keep them off of you when you go to sleep. Three big dogs, a small dog, two cats, and they all think I'm their bed. And a chameleon. And you know what? I like Pascal. He hangs out in his own place. He's happy to eat the worms that I give him. He he likes, for some reason, when I wear a red shirt, he beelines towards me like because I've got to hold. I either got to feed him the worms by hand, and he'll whack and take it out of my hand, or I just fill his little bowl and I hold it. But if I'm wearing a red shirt, he leaves them alone, and it's like a slow moving wreck because he's like. And he slowly with his, with his, he climbs up my hand. Yeah, but like it's this. this. That's his fingers. Yeah. And he's like, oh, he's going over the ball. Now he's climbing up my arm. Okay, come on, Pascal, because I'm afraid I'm gonna drop him. And I honey, I'm sorry Pascal didn't make it. That would I would just have to burn the house and go with it. Um and he climbs up and he sets on my red shirt and he starts getting these red stripes on him. He's like, Yeah, buddy, look at me. And he goes up my shoulder and he sits here with his head against my neck for a little bit. I guess it's because it's warm. And then he makes his way up and he sits here. And I can't get him off. And I'm like, okay, come on, come on, I want to put you up. So I have to stick my head into his his case. Mm-hmm. And then wait for him to reach over and grab a branch. And it is like slow and painful waiting and then when he makes that last one I'm like pulling my head away and he'll drag that tail across my head I'm like oh man but he's a cool character I like him I like him a lot he has the most character of every animal in here except for my my Scarlet well animals are your friend they love you They, they, they stick by you my cat my son's cat was by my side the whole time my family was was gone and while I was dealing with tooth pain. Um, but anyway, everyone, we hope you enjoyed this episode of us coming back to ramble about nonsense, toys, movies, and everything else in between. Uh, we will catch you next week. In the meantime, have a great one. Later. Peace out.